G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Tuesday here in Australia, so it's sort of the start of the week uh, in other parts overseas and we're getting more news. It's usually a bit of a slow news week. Uh, you know, over the weekend you don't get a whole lot of news, but this one is massive. So Three Arrows Capital, it's a Singapore uh, hedge fund company. They buy over $1 billion worth of Bitcoin. Now, because they're a hedge fund, big massive company, they can't go out and just kind of buy it their own. What they've actually done is they've bought up 6%. I'm gonna say this again, 6% of all of Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin trust holdings. So here, according to a recent filing with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, Three Arrows Capital, a Singapore-based hedge fund, has bought about $1.3 billion worth of stock-traded Bitcoin. The firm bought 38,888 uh, 38, uh, shares issued uh, by Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, at $34.10 per share. The interesting thing is that each share is redeemable for actual Bitcoin at the rate of 0 0.001 BTC. So they're, they're paying a premium for it. Although it is unclear whether Three Arrows made the purchase under the directions of a specific client, the large buy currently stands as the biggest one-off purchase nonetheless. Three Arrows' position represents 6.1% of all of Grayscale's Bitcoin uh, holdings. So if one company has come in and bought 6% of all of Grayscale's Bitcoin trust, do you reckon that more are gonna come in and do the same? And do you think that Grayscale is going to continue to buy more Bitcoin? They're gonna need more Bitcoin. This is one company that's come in and bought up 6%. Other companies are gonna come in and do the same. Other, com other companies are likely gonna come in and buy up even more uh, than this. And look, even if it's not more, if it's just something similar, it's only gonna take 20 companies to do that, and that's 100% uh, of Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin trust completely gone. There are other companies buying right now. Uh, we just haven't heard about it. And they are likely buying similar amounts. Some will even possibly be buying more. But I can guarantee you it's more than 20 large institutions that are coming in and buying up Grayscale's Bitcoin. They will continue to buy. Uh, and again, eventually the OTC stuff is going to just run dry and they're going to start buying from the market. I mean, we've already seen the price of Bitcoin go crazy and we'll get into the markets very soon. But this is massive news. One company alone, and they're paying a premium to do it, but they bought up 6% of all of Grayscale's Bitcoin holdings. Uh, again, watch this space. Bitcoin has cooled off at the moment but I don't think it's gonna cool off for long. It may travel sideways for a while. It is gonna to continue to go up. Uh, and we'll talk about the corrections and that very shortly, but I thought this was a massive story. Look, something else, Ukraine government, they've decided to use the Stellar uh, network uh, to help them build their national digital currency. So Stellar has had a little bit of a pump uh, and there is, you know, fight about whether, you know, Stellar will also be in the SEC's uh, you know, sites, but at the moment they haven't been. They seem just simply focused on uh, XRP at the moment. And, you know, it'll really depend on what happens with that XRP and whether, you know, the SEC will go after uh, Stellar because they're very similar projects developed by the same person. So here we can see, uh, announced Monday, the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine and the Stellar Development Foundation signed a memorandum of understanding to build out a virtual asset ecosystem and national digital currency of Ukraine. Um, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, but there was uh, another country that's also done the same. They've decided to build on the Stellar blockchain. Uh, I'll have to go back and uh, fact check that, but I'm pretty sure someone else did. The National Bank of Ukraine has been searching the possibility of CBDC implementation since 2017, and the Stellar Partnership will now be the basis of its virtual currency development, according to Digital Transformation and IT Deputy Minister, oh God, I'll, but, I'll butcher this, but let's have a go, Alexander Bornyakov. Oh God, I hope I, I pronounced that right, and if I, do, I, if I didn't, sorry, I do apologise. 
Uh, so again, this space is just building. You know, we're having a little bit of a mini altcoin sort of season here. I don't think it's the big one. And I'm not sure how long it's gonna last and I will get into that very shortly. Now also another one, so the OCC greenlights national banks to run nodes and stablecoin networks. So the latest from the Treasury's most crypto forward office says that national banks don't have to fear stablecoin nodes. Monday evening, the Treasury office of the comptroller of the uh, currency told national banks that they are allowed to run independent nodes for distributed ledger networks. Refer uh, referring to of independent node verification networks, the OCC's interpretive letter says that banks may use new technologies, including INVNs and related stablecoins to perform bank permission, uh, permissible functions such as payment activities. Coming amid, coming amid a great deal of uncertainty as to the future of stablecoins, the OCC's announcement is big news. The office nonetheless cautions that there are cyber risks inherent to using such technology. So this is uh, bullish news, but you know, with a caution there, with a warning as well, that look, stablecoins, they're kind of good to go and you know they develop their own or again go and do something similar to the Ukraine and you know get on the back of Stella however they may do it but they've been given the green light to run their own nodes for stable coins and it sounds like USDC uh, is going to be really big because uh, they've been uh, compliant and regulated for some time so uh, I think a number of them will probably uh, run with that or again maybe create their own coin we'll just have to wait and see but again, they're just, the information is there. It's just pouring in that this is the way of the future. It is still early. I mean, the banks don't even have their own currencies yet. They're just being given the green lights. And now they've got to, you know, they've probably already been building them for a while, but they've got to be put out and released. And again, we go over to here, massive hedge funds, you know, buying into Bitcoin trusts. And eventually they'll do the same with Ethereum when an Ethereum ETF comes out and all the rest of it. Now, last story before we get on to the market stuff. So crypto-friendly app cautions users uh, to reassess their XRP holdings. So it's a bit more FUD. Now, XRP, you know, hit its low of about 19 cents and guess where I sold pretty much all my XRP at 19 cents. And I think it's trading around about 23 cents now, but it's kind of found a home there. So we'll see what this does. But it says here, uh, Revolut warned users that the XRP XRP funds could be stuck in a worst case scenario. So Revolut, a crypto friendly trading app, is reportedly issuing a strong warning to its customers regarding buying and selling XRP. According to the news outlet, the Irish Times, the fintech firm recently sent out a notice to its customers saying that it was still possible for the firm to delist or restrict trading on XRP with little or no notice. Revolt warned users that their funds could effectively be stuck without the means to sell tokens, even if the price falls to zero in a worst case scenario. So that is uh, the, you know, something that people need to be worried about. Now look, I don't think XRP is going to zero, but what say it drops down to eight cents, but you're, they've halted trading. You got something that's worth 23 cents now, uh, some bad news comes out and you wanna sell and you can't because you're stuck all of a sudden you've lost two thirds of the value of your coins. Now, I don't wanna hate on XRP, I like XRP. Uh, I'm still invested in it, even though I uh, sold a majority of it off. Uh, I just need a decision one way or the other. Even if it's declared a security, it's not the end of the world for XRP. XRP continues. They, are, they have their, you know, they have their resolution uh, and you know what they want is to not be considered a security. If they consider it a security, they have to pay a substantial kind of fine, uh, and then it basically, you know, is all, all but done, for, all, all but over for them. But that's what they're trying to avoid. They don't want to pay uh, that fine at the moment because it could be uh, quite a substantial fine because they've fought so hard. So you know, if you're an XRP holder. You know, make your own mind up, do your research. Again, for me, I still hold some XRP, but it really is not a lot. And again, if they get the ruling and everything's uh, done and dusted, and I have to buy back at 30 cents or 40 cents, then that's just the way it goes. I just can't hold on to it if it goes to like 8 cents or 10 cents. And look, I'm not saying that that's the price it's going to, but it would just hurt too much if it did. Uh, and again, this could drag on for a really, really long time. I just need 
uh, you know, the security of a decision one way or the other before I can uh, really have a significant part of my investments uh, in XRP. All right, let's go over to the markets. So, um, 863 billion, so there has been a sell-off, but look, let's give this a bit of a refresh. Let's see where we're at. All right, $866 billion. So it definitely has come down uh, and Bitcoin has sort of plateaued at the moment, but that's why the altcoins are doing so well. Excuse me, and if Bitcoin sort of, you know, just trades sideways for a while, the altcoins are gonna continue to run. But I do feel that there's just more and more Bitcoin news coming. Now look, I did uh, take some profits yesterday uh, and I ended up putting them into Ethereum and Bitcoin. I was going to have money sitting on the sidelines uh, for a retracement, but I, there's just too much buying pressure at the moment. And when we get to the charts, you'll see, I don't think Bitcoin's going lower. I don't think anyone's going to have enough or be game enough to sell enough Bitcoin to push it down too low. There's just too much buying pressure. Uh, and similar with Ethereum. So uh, I don't have any cash on the side whatsoever at the well. Not very much anyway. We're talking like, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks if we're lucky sitting on the side. I've put it all into Ethereum uh, and Bitcoin. Now, that's just the cash I had sitting on the side. Not everything. I've still got uh, other tokens. And again, I still have some cash on the side. But I just see Ethereum and Bitcoin continuing to move up. I don't see any major retracements anytime soon. And look, all the, the altcoins uh, have, you know, been doing fairly well over seven days, but we can see it's eased off now. But the other reason is that I know US stimulus checks are starting to come out. They're gonna go into Bitcoin. Most of the ones that uh, you know, put it into cryptocurrencies, they're gonna put it into Bitcoin. You know, Some of it may trickle into these other ones, but most people are gonna put it into Bitcoin and I fully expect Bitcoin to just go on another run. Look, it may kind of range for a while like it has done. It may range between sort of, you know, 30,000 and let's say maybe 34,000. There'll be some volatility there, uh, but then I expect it to uh, just continue to go on a run uh, and you know, start to head towards 50,000. Now, I did put out a tweet here. Um, where are we go to my profile? So here, every time we see a Bitcoin pullback, it gets bought up so quickly and there is constant news of another institution buying up massive amounts. Again, three arrows capital, we just spoke about that. I just can't see any big corrections anytime in the near future. I am now thinking we won't see another big correction because we had one and we'll have a look at that. Uh, until about fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. I know that seems kind of crazy, but again, there's you know these companies here are buying up massive amounts of Bitcoin. Grayscale need to make up for that. They have their Bitcoin. Someone comes in up and buys up six percent. They're like, all right, well we better buy some more because I again I can almost guarantee I'm not part of Grayscale, so I can't you know put my hand on my heart and say it's one hundred percent true. But I can just you know, I can feel it. My gut is telling me institutions are still pouring in, absolutely pouring in. And these are still, you know, these companies now, institutions, are still going to be considered the early adopters. We haven't had the real institutional FOMO. That won't really start until Bitcoin becomes a trillion dollar asset. So Bitcoin. So at the moment, it's got a market cap of uh, $581 billion. So it basically needs to double for it to be kind of legitimized. And I can, I 100% see that happening. I have no doubt that we're going to see uh, this up to the, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollar mark. Whether that happens, like you know, next week or next month or in the next four or five months, uh, I'm unsure of. And look, again, we need to remember there could be a correction, and we have had a correction, believe it or not. But once uh, Bitcoin's market cap hits the trillion dollar mark, it kind of legitimizes it. Now that is just uh, Bitcoin alone hitting the trillion dollar mark. And look, it does make up a major part of this market cap. More money's pouring into Bitcoin, it will continue to come. But once that hits one trillion dollars, it'll legitimize it. Uh, likely an ETF will probably come out sometime around about there. Uh, we're still waiting to see if the Vanek ETF is gonna be approved. 
and that is when the real institutional FOMO is going to start. That's when other businesses are going to go, rightio, this is legit, this is real. Yes, they'll have missed out on a ton of profits, but they won't care. Again, with all the you know, information out there saying that uh, Bitcoin could be going to you know, 300,000, 200,000. If you're buying it at, you know, 60,000, $70,000, and there's talk that it's going to 200,000 or 300,000, they aren't caring. That's three or four X times their money. Uh, and it'll probably be done in a matter of months to maybe a year or so. They genuinely, generally can't go anywhere else and 4X their money in a matter of months to a year. That kind of stuff generally takes years to happen in the traditional finance markets. Now again, I need to stress this. None of what I say is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I have no financial advising experience or qualifications. This is just my personal opinion from someone who has spent some time in the crypto space. Again, I've been here for a couple of years now. I got in late in the 2017 bull run, experienced the whole bear market, and now I'm experiencing this new bull run. So let's have a look. Gas prices are soaring, 143. It is really uh, you know, chewing up stuff at the moment. Uh, it makes it almost unusable. Now, don't get me wrong, it's been higher. It's been up around... 270 300 and something and that was when it was super expensive uh, but at the moment again just too expensive uh, to use ETH and we really need some layer 2 solutions to come out uh, the dominance 13% uh, Bitcoin dominance has dropped it was around 71% dropped down to 67% uh, but this will sort of rise again once the altcoin markets uh, start to cool off and again, this may drop down to 65, uh, 60%, you know, over just a few days if uh, altcoins continue to rally. But I think a lot of money is going to start to come back into Bitcoin again. People have taken their profits. Again, the uh, altcoins have rallied for pretty much a week now. So now that money is going to trickle back into Bitcoin. And that's the cycle. It, it was Bitcoin first. Then it was your large uh, caps, again, pretty much the top five to maybe top 10, and then all your low caps, uh, uh, mid caps start to go, and then all your low caps start to go. And then all those uh, funds, again, get trickled around back into Bitcoin. So I am uh, expecting that Bitcoin will go on another run. But again, we just need to be mindful that a correction, a bigger correction could come. But speaking of that, let's just have a, well, actually before that, What's been the big gainers over the last 24 hours? Loopring absolutely smashed it. Aave, Synthetics Network, Energy Web Token. Again, Stella had that pump talking about uh, over in the Ukraine and that. So some great pumps here. And look, some good double-digit sort of pumps as well, particularly from Loopring. Uh, I did take, take some profits from Loopring uh, and again, put it into Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. All right, what about losers? Any big losers over the 24 hours? There has Digibyte, so it has struggled a bit. Theta Network, but again, uh, not so much uh, Digibyte, but look, 8% is pretty good for a week. No one's hating on it. Uh, but Theta, of course, they're going to have a pullback, so they 22%. Nano, Nano was on an absolute rip roar. Uh, and I know Zill's going to be somewhere in there. Zill, Zillica, it's gone up 1,500, 1,400% this year. Uh, so, of course, it's going to have a pullback. So anyone who was into Zillica early uh, and, you know, got out near the top will have done unbelievably well, you know, 1,400%. That's unbelievable. So, again, the losses, they're generally not too bad. They're low double digits and then just single digits. Single digit losses, you know, that doesn't really hurt too much uh, considering, you know, you go up double digit uh, gains over, you know, the seven day period. All right, now let's go over to here. So let's have a look at Bitcoin. So what I want to show you is this is the run up that we've had. Now, really, since kind of back here, we have only had maybe two reasonable corrections. That's this one here, which was about 17%. And now we've just had this one here. I mean, this there's a correction here as well. And let's have a look, what was that correction? If we took it from the high to the low, an 11% correction and how long did that take? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it was 11 days uh, to pull back 11%. Let's go and have a look what has just happened recently. So again, we're going to use the wicks because the prices did wick up to there. 
So we had a 20% correction in a matter of sort of 24 hours, 48 hours. We're not including this one. This is the new one. Uh, and Bitcoin's starting to push back up. Again, the stimulus checks are starting to flow out through Americans. There is going to be Americans who are going to start to put that money uh, into uh, Bitcoin. Again, businesses will also be getting more stimulus. They're going to put that into Bitcoin. This Bitcoin uh, you know, ride is going to continue. Uh, and again, look, people are still making money in the stock market as well, but it's just generally not comparing to uh, how Bitcoin's going. So again, for me, I think it is more sort of upside. We may only just, you know, very, ever so slightly kind of travel up for a little while and again do, you know, something similar to kind of this where it might take a couple of days and we might even do something similar to this. We have a bit of a pump and then we sell off and take some of it uh, back before it just goes on its next leg. So for me, I'm really now targeting kind of the 50000 right up to $75,000 mark before we have any kind of big pullbacks. I mean, again, you know, this is more wick. The pullback wasn't a whole lot, and it really, I think it was pushed down to cover that CME gap. Uh, and look, it did that. So for me, uh, yeah, I'm expecting Bitcoin to can continue doing uh, similar to what it has done maybe not quite so parabolic and we might go into a bit of sideways for a while and look we might even sort of start to slowly go down for a while and again then come back down and retest these kind of levels so maybe we retrace to 29,000 you know sort of 400 over the next week or so or maybe even next two or three weeks it could go quiet for a while but I think on the probabilities we're more likely to start to push upwards again with news like this you know, three arrows by 6% uh, of, you know, grayscales, total Bitcoin trust. Other companies are going to do the same. Skybridge has got their one going and all these other companies have got their one going. Uh, you know, their Bitcoin uh, purchases and trusts and funds and all the rest of it happening. I see the price continuing to push up. And again, as I spoke just before, the real crazy institutional FOMO will start once Bitcoin hits a trillion dollars, that's when you know other big companies are going to say, "Rightio, this is legitimate now. Uh, it's not a flyby night kind of thing." Which is funny that people can think that after a decade, well, actually even longer, twelve years. But it's just because it's so new. It's a new revolution. It uh, it takes you know a number of times for something to be spoken to you about before you're going to take it seriously. At first, you'll hear about it, forget about it. You hear about it again, you go, yeah, I think I remember someone telling me about that, forget about it. And then the third, fourth, fifth time you'll be go, you'll start to think, yeah, that's right, I've heard about this, and and you'll start to do more, you know. You'll start to want to learn more about it if it's something that's interests you. And that is exactly what's happening with Bitcoin and just cryptocurrencies. The market is starting to mature. You know, again, there's businesses out there that probably have never really heard about Bitcoin. And this may be the second time or even the first for some of them that they've heard about it. So as I said, they'll forget about it. Then they'll hear about it again a little bit later. And that might be the second or the third time. And then they're going to be like, I've heard about this before. I need to look into this. And again, once it sort of sinks in and they have a look and they'll have, you know, people come and do their, you know, research on it and they'll say, this is what Bitcoin's done over a number of sort of years and months and days and all the rest of it. And they're going to go, rightio. So back in 2016, I could have bought this for $471 and it's now worth over $30,000. Yep, we're going to be getting some of this. And again, we're just... Again, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we've only just crept over the old all-time high. We're not that high above it. We're only $12,000 over. And $12,000 is not a lot, uh, particularly when we're talking about our cryptocurrencies. You know, we go back to this one, the old all-time high. Look what it did. Look how much it soared over that. And that was with no institutional money. That was just... You know, geeks and all the rest of it really getting into it. There was very little institutions into it back here. The institutions started to pay attention here and they started to accumulate here. But again, that's really just kind of grayscale and, you know, some very early adopters. It's not until here that they're really starting to pay attention. 
Again, this is where uh, MicroStrategy was buying in. They sort of got in around the $10,000 level and were buying right up to $21,000. I think their average price was about $19,000 per Bitcoin that they've paid. So do you think they're ready to sell? That you know they, They've doubled their money on some, but in others they haven't. The average price hasn't even doubled yet. So MicroStrategy is not interested in selling. Three Arrows Capital has only just bought in. And again, they've bought at a premium. Do you think they're interested in selling? They're not going to be interested in selling till at least doubles, if not triples. Uh, and again, they could be taking a really long-term strategy on this. So maybe when they do sell, it's only a very small amount. But we do need to be aware that there is companies that will come in don't really understand the fundamentals of Bitcoin and they will just be looking for a quick flip. They're going to get in at whatever price it is, you know, 35000 and when it gets to $70,000, uh, they completely sell the lot and then just take the money because they don't believe in Bitcoin uh, and the movement uh, and the change of the guard and all the rest of it. For me, I believe in it. I think it's here to stay. I will sell some Bitcoin at hopefully around the peak. But look, the majority of my Bitcoin I will simply be holding because I think this has a decade or two of significant upside. I don't know if the upside will be as good as uh, it will be this year. It's been getting smaller every time, but I do think this might be the one that is the biggest of them all. As Da Vinci J said, you know, that hyper Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoinization, uh, I think that is definitely on the cards. And look, you know, maybe we see a $500,000 Bitcoin a million dollar Bitcoin, you know, Da Vinci J said he thought it could go to $1.2 million per Bitcoin this cycle because of inflation and all the rest of it. I mean, imagine if one Bitcoin was $1.2 million. What happens to the alts? They will go absolutely ballistic. I'd hate to think what Ethereum would be worth. It'd probably be about $100,000, if not $150,000 in Ethereum itself, you know, around that 15% mark, if it doesn't gain even more ground on Bitcoin. Uh, and then again, imagine what all the rest do. There is, you know, there's definitely the possibility of unbelievably, you know, life-changing wealth to be made here. But, you know, whether you're smart enough to get on board at the right time and, you know, invest in the right projects and sell at the right times, you know, that's going to be the determining factor. And I don't have all the answers for you. For me, I'm investing long term in Bitcoin uh, and our dollar cost average at the moment. I think $30,000 is still low in a long term investment uh, portfolio. Again, in 10 years time, I think $30,000 will can be considered seriously cheap, but that's not financial advice. But in the short term, look, this could go down to you know, $24,000, $15,000 uh, with a hefty correction. I just don't think the possibility of that happening uh, is high enough at the moment. I think us going to maybe 50, 70 something thousand dollars and having a 50% correction is completely possible. That I think is possible. But yeah, from here, I think there's just too much momentum. All right, let me know down below, uh, do you think Grayscale are going to continue to buy Bitcoin with the uh, you know, acquisition of you know, 6% of its Bitcoin bought up by one single business? Love to know your thoughts. All right, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button down below. I put out daily content. Uh, any comments you put down there, as long as they're not you know, trying to shill something silly, and I get a lot of those comments uh, in there. Uh, I'm more than happy to get back to you. Uh, open to constructive criticism on how I can do better. If there's something you'd like me to cover, you know, do a deep dive on a coin. Uh, again, they take a lot more time. Uh, generally, I'm just giving my thoughts uh, and some news. But look, I'm happy to put more time in if there's something you want me to cover specifically. And I will you know, go into where my portfolio uh, is mainly based and my thoughts on uh, where it's going to go in the future. All right. Stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment and I'll see you next time.